I don't know if you can see it out there, but it's raining. It's been raining all night. Uh, so welcome to a rainy Monday morning, everyone. And I hope you had a wonderful weekend and are staying clear of a lot of the the wild traffic and craziness and shopping of this time of year. It is really at this time of year that I cannot escape looking back uh, at Christmas's past, and um, and that triggers other other memories and and uh, things like that, and. Uh, uh, usually bring up thoughts of of a, a rich and colorful life misspent. <laughs> no, the, it, it's it's a double-edged short sword. All of this nostalgia and and things like that. Uh, and. Uh, at this time of year, it, it seems like I, I, I'm dreaming more and more about dead people <laughs> and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> things related to uh, mortality. <clears throat> I don't know if you've uh, uh, dreamed about dead people very, very much, but it's so it's usually in the dream. It takes you a while to, to realize well, wait a minute, isn't this person dead? You know, uh, it's uh, uh, it's kind of uh, uh, in enjoyable to uh, to in enjoy their company without uh, uh, you know remembering that they're that they're dead, and then when you wake up and uh, and shift back into uh, uh, consciousness. The, the whole event sort of is disturbing. You go, oh, God, he came by in a car and asked me to get in or something like, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, it got me thinking about uh, that. And uh, uh, a few years back, uh, uh, the tarot, tarot person, a tarot luminary, it took tarot expert Janet uh, uh, Boyer wrote a wrote a book or compiled a book uh, with uh, with uh, contributions by uh, uh, all sorts of uh, tarot authors and tarot luminaries um, and uh, she invited me to uh, uh, contribute a little something. Believe me, I was the biggest putz on the panel, but I, I contributed a little something, and uh, which I'm going to share share with you. Uh, but the the idea is we usually think of tarot as giving us insight, uh, using tarot as a, as a divinatory tool to gain some insight on what is likely likely to happen in the, in the future or an idea like that. Most divinatory uh, systems are, you know, intended to to do that. And I'm of the firm firm belief that that uh, uh, certain things are just uh, uh, so set in stone that it's that it, that it's pretty much likely that the, that they're going to occur. Uh, but there there is much that is still in flux and. Uh, and fluid, and can go one way, one way or the other. Uh, that's sort of the the beauty of the the Yi Ching, uh, for me, which is uh, uh, as a divinatory tool like that. The Yi Ching is uh, uh, easier for me to use and clearer to me than tarot. Uh, I I'm very comfortable reading tarot for other people because I can be detached and and uh, sort of kind of easily see the see things you know well that's the way it is you poor bastard you know <laughs> sorry uh but when the poor bastard is me i i lie to myself too much i'm i'm sorry uh the ching is set up in, in such a way that uh that uh, it, you know if you're paying attention it doesn't let you lie to yourself uh 
too much. But anyway, so we think about the uh, the tarot in terms of uh, uh, future events. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, Janet's, uh, Janet Boyer's idea was was quite ingenious and it's a and it's a really good book i, I put the link up uh, uh it came out i don't know how many years ago but it's still still up and selling uh, using the tarot to gain insight on past events and uh, so she asked a number of us to uh, uh draw a few cards concerning past events and uh, and in, and interpret them and um, it's what a great idea and it's just marvelous to uh, uh, to see now we all know that hindsight is 100 percent accurate okay everything becomes clear in hindsight you know you're a you're a big total freaking Isaiah prophet in hindsight. Uh, so there's a certain amount of, uh, of that in it too. But it also gives, uh, uh, gives you a, a standpoint from which to, to, to look at how the cards uh, are uh, commenting. On, on past events that you've already seen play uh, play out. And of course, uh, uh, no one knows the full ends of all of his acts and no one knows the full, the full story behind past events too. And so the tarot cards can, uh, can give you uh, uh, at least a springboard for further exegesis on your view of past events. I chose the tragedy of 9-11. And I drew uh, eight cards that I just put in, uh, eight for Mercury and Thoth, and, and he did a sort of little invocation of Thoth, uh, because that's sort of where I thought it would be uh, appropriate. And I drew eight cards concerning 9-11. And the cards were the moon. I'll talk in detail in just a minute. The moon. The tower. And when I drew the tower, the hair stuck up on the back of my neck. The Eight of Swords, shortened force. The Hanged Man. Now this is before I saw the, the, the rare, horrifying video of a man leaping off of the the a high story and falling to his death head first and he's making that cross with his leg it's a famous it's a famous picture but then i got the hang man the five of discs. Now, each of the small cards and court cards have dates associated with them. The small cards represent 10 degrees in the zodiac. I didn't even uh, uh, spend too much time trying to say, well, what happened in April uh, of the following year, you know. That was no surprise. The death card. The Ten of Swords. Ruin. And Dick Cheney. I mean, the Emperor card. 
and here's what I said, and this is my contribution to the uh, Janet Boyer's book, the Back in Time Tarot book. Impressions of the events of 9-11, Lon Milo Duquette. The destruction of the Twin Towers in New York City's World Trade Center on September 11th, 2001, was a seminal event in the first decade of the 21st century. Theories concerning what really happened abound, and nearly everyone, including me, has an opinion. Here's what I see when I go back in time to view that terrible event and its aftermath through the magic lens of tarot. For this back in time snapshot, I'm using Aleister Crowley's those tarot deck. Well, my own deck was was more handy this morning, so that these are the images I'm showing you. The moon. Two figures of the jackal-headed Egyptian god Anubis, Anubis, guardians of the dead, stand before the dark twin towers of the moon card. Drops of blood fall from the sky in the space between the two towers. All is not as it appears. Illuminated by the false light of the moon in her infernal aspect, the entire card is a glyph of madness and deception, a nauseating delusion of a nightmare. The Tower also titled The Blasted Tower and the House of God. The scene is dominated by a lightning-struck tower crumbling in flames as human figures plunge from the heights. The white dove of peace, olive branch still in her beak, soars toward the edge of the card as if to flee the horrible spectacle. Remember, I was using the Thoth Tarot, which has those images on it. The Eight of Swords. Interference, or Shortened Force. Oh, also uh, titled the Lord of Shortened Force. Jet fighters that would have been scrambled to intercept the hijacked planes, which are still in the air, are occupied in a Vice President Cheney ordered and supervised, quote, exercise many hundreds of miles away and unable to assist. Chaos on multiple communication levels ensues. The Hanged Man. Television viewers around the world are helpless and bound to their seats as the scenes of horror unfold. And like I say, there really was one of those. Five of Discs. Worry or material trouble. The Pentagon is hit. Five of Discs. The Pentagon is hit. A large fragment, the large fragmented discs on the card suggest the breach in the wall where a plane or missile penetrates the building. The nation worries that the White House will be targeted next. No kidding. The enormity of the death toll begins to sink in as reports of the building's occupancy numbers are calculated. The day has become a grotesque dance of death. Two 
Ten of Swords, Ruin. Shortly after Lady Harris painted th this card, uh, Frida Harris, the Thoth deck painter, on September uh, 18th, 1939, she wrote Crowley saying, I have done with the Ten of Swords and promptly Russia takes up arms. She's talking about current events of her days. She finished off her Ten of Swords and all of a sudden, Russia takes up arms. 1939, that's against Hitler. Finally, the Emperor. Presidential authority gains near martial law omnipotence. Congress becomes a rubber stamp to the build up to war. Habeas corpus is suspended. Phones and emails of an entire nation are monitored. So that was my back in time tarot look at the events of 9-11. Of course, I've, I've uh, painted it with my own, my own uh, uh, amateur conspiratorial doubts and and uh, and theories but it was food for thought and it and it did allow me to to uh, sort of take an, another more more uh, cosmic view uh, of the entire situation uh, i have yet to do a back in time uh, look at the events uh, that are going on in the Middle East at the moment. But I'm sure I will, and I'm uh, probably not going to be any more, <laughs> any more happy with, uh, with what I see uh, than I was for 9-11. But anyway, it's something for you to do. Another reason that, that uh, I've done this today is because uh, in just a day or so, I'm going to do the year ahead uh, tarot f uh, forecast uh, where I use nothing but uh, the 22 trumps um, after shuffling them in the special way that I'll uh, that I'll share with you. The first 10 will be the the tree of life, and then the the remaining. 12 cards uh, will be the month by month uh, card for the year ahead. So I hope you you stay tuned. I, I put the whole uh, directions for that a little lower on my Facebook page with a nice picture of uh, something that I did, uh, I don't know, five or six years ago uh, of it with the cards laid out. And you might want to think about doing that uh, that yourself uh, and join me. It'll probably be on Thursday. Uh, so uh, uh, have your cards ready and you can join me and do your own. Until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.